does a recent patent filing indicate that the Canon EOS R1 or the Canon EOS R5 Mark II will get internal active cooling or perhaps an external cooling accessory similar to what Panasonic delivered with the Fujifilm X-H2S? Then stick around after this short message for all the details. But first, subscribe to this channel for a chance to win a Canon EOS R5. I'll be giving one away to one lucky subscriber once this channel reaches 100,000 subscribers. Anyone above the age of 18 with a valid mailing address is eligible. Additional terms and conditions are linked in the description down below. Canon Patent JP2023-170599 Alpha was filed on May the 19th, 2022 and published on December the 1st, just a couple of days ago. The patent aims to provide an imaging apparatus that's capable of efficiently cooling an imaging element without obstructing the movement of the in-body image stabilization mechanism and without enlarging the imaging apparatus. The patent publication blueprints clearly show the mirrorless camera having an internal fan unit. It also shows the sensor and the in-body image stabilization system. Unlike previous patent applications such as JPA 2023-128-236, the blueprints for the various cameras or the representations of this technology don't indicate whether it's going to be a 1 series or R series or 5 series. It leaves us guessing. We, we can't really determine, at least not right away, whether this is meant for a 1 series or a 5 series. Despite Canon clearly hiding the identity of the camera they plan to introduce this technology, the blueprints provide us with some hints. Look here. See those side vents? And here on the other side? Some would point out that this indicates direct venting, direct venting of the external air to the internal components. And of course, that would eliminate any sort of, well, weather sealing. And this would be something that we wouldn't expect to see on a Canon EOS R1 or the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. It's something that we'd likely see more on, well, a camera like the Canon EOS R5C Mark II. But taking a closer look, we can see that the air is not directly making contact with internal components, but is instead being routed through heat pipes. All right, does that help? Can you now guess which camera might get this technology or which cameras might get this technology? Here's another clue. On August the 23rd, 2023, the Camera Insider provided us with some specs for the much anticipated Canon EOS R5 Mark II take a look at the third specification. Better cooling than the Canon EOS R1. But this is a rumor after all. The Camera Insider hasn't validated this information. But the demands on the Canon EOS R5 Mark II would certainly warrant a better thermal architecture. And I talked about this way back in 2020, stating that the Canon EOS R5 does have, well, not the best thermal architecture design and that to actually eliminate any sort of overheating. And this was back in 2020 before we had firmware 1.6, which does address that. But I was suggesting that to have, well, to, to have internal heat pipes would certainly help or to have a better, well, copper heat sink at, from the sensor and the image processor directly to the case would help cool things down. We've seen several products on the market that actually do this. A simple copper plate allows you to record 8K raw at room temperature without any overheating whatsoever. It wasn't until firmware 1.6 came out with auto temp power off and setting that to high, because when you first install the software, it's set to standard. But if you set it to high and you've got the LCD out, I've had no problem recording 8K raw at 30 frames per second or 4K HQ 30 frames per second for hours. I mean, two and a half hours at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and the deaf director was able to do that at up to 96 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's pretty hot. That's around 36, 36.5 degrees Celsius at 96 degrees. But we still have a lot of way to go. There are still some overheating issues that have many people staying away from this camera. And heat pipes would certainly help distribute the heat, get it away from the internal components of the camera to the outside. It would certainly help. It would help the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, but it would also help the Canon EOS R1. And it's certainly plausible, it certainly makes sense that these two cameras would have a better thermal architecture. 
I know, citing a rumor is not the best forecaster, especially as the information from the Camera Insider is yet to be validated. But we do know that the patent applies to a stills hybrid camera. We can see this in the blueprints. We can see that it's got a hot shoe, a specific kind of hot shoe that we see in stills hybrid cameras, not cinema cameras, not video-centric cinema cameras on the low end. But we have some more pieces, more what I would call um, circumstantial evidence. As Holmes would do, he put all the evidence together. And what we're seeing here is that, well, Canon's refreshed most of their lineup. We've got the R50, the R100, the R7, the R8, the R10, the R6, and the R5 with the R1 left to come out. And of course, there's really no surprises that we're getting the Canon EOS R5 Mark II announced in the first quarter of 2024, unless of course that gets pushed, but definitely next year we're getting the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. So what does that tell us? Well, if you look at the technology, if you look at the blueprints here in this particular patent application, what you can clearly see is that this technology requires several parts. It requires redesign of the internal components of the camera and maybe even making the body size just a little bit bigger. And to do all that, to be able to do this, well, it's going to require more costs. It's going to require more resources. And that's going to, well, it's not going to go into an entry-level camera. And pretty well, Canon's kind of done right now with those entry-level cameras. The R100 and the R50 kind of have that space covered. The only thing kind of missing is really an R9, which would be, well, if we took the Canon EOS RP and modernized it, well, that would be the R9. We've got the R8, we've got the R6 Mark II, and the R5 Mark II is going to refresh the R5. And outside of that, there's really nothing screaming in the Canon lineup for a refresh. And yes, I do understand that many of you would like to see an R7 Mark II, but I think it's still too early for that. The R1, the one series camera, is due for a refresh every four years, just before or on the eve of, well, the Olympics. And what do we have coming up in 2024 at the end of July? The Paris Olympics. So it certainly makes sense that you would put this technology in that camera. A camera, according to Canon rumors, that isn't going to be made from the parts bin, but is going to get all new parts. So for the flagship model, it certainly makes sense. But it also makes sense to put it in the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. After all, the camera in its current configuration can shoot 8K RAW at 30 frames per second. To be able to do that continuously, to, re to be able to remove that 30 minute record limit, after all, this is a 5 series camera. New, it sells for around $3,800, $3,900. And yes, I, th I think it still might be on sale for $900 off. But what's remarkable about that $900 off is that we also see that $900 off on the Canon EOS R5C. So based on the selling point for both of these two cameras, the Canon EOS R5 Mark II and the Canon EOS R1, we certainly think it's plausible that this technology, if it's being considered for new Canon cameras, that it would end up in those two cameras. But as with any patent application, JPA 2023 170599 shows us that a few years ago, Canon spent some considerable time and resources researching better cooling and made enough progress to file at least this one patent application. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us something that we've known all along that the overheating issues in Canon cameras such as the Canon EOS R5 needed a better thermal architecture design and that Canon has realized this enough to consider it an issue to assign resources to developing new technologies that could improve the thermal, well, the thermal limits of these cameras to improve them from where they are and that the Canon EOS R5 Mark II and the Canon EOS R1 are the most likely cameras to get these benefits, to get internal heat pipes. Now, keep in mind that internal heat pipes aren't some sort of crazy new invention. There's something that we've seen in computers for a very long time, and to put these into cameras certainly makes sense. Obviously, they'd be, sm they'd be smaller, and they're not going to use any sort of, well, liquid cooling. But to be able to take that heat directly away from where it's generated without impacting the, the sensor stabilization system, the IBIS, in-body image stabilization, that's a big deal. And I would love to see that on the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. There's no sense removing that 30 minute record limit if we have to slap on something like a 40 or 50 minute um, overheat limit. It just gets frustrating. And I think having auto temp power off was great for firmware 1.6. It's a software solution for a physical problem. To actually have a physical solution for a physical problem, eliminating the issue instead of working around it, 
I think that's a really, I think that's a really big deal because keep in mind, as we increase the temperature in a camera, inside the camera around the internal components, as it reaches a certain level, we start to introduce noise into the images. We start to lose that sharpness that we gain from that high resolution sensor that we gain from having expensive glass such as the Canon RF 85 millimeter f1.2, the Canon RF 24 to 200, 24 to 200, the 24 to 105 f2.8 and other lenses, even the Canon EOS or the Canon R RF 50 millimeter f1.2 that I'm shooting with right now. And while I don't have any of those issues shooting here at what, five o'clock in the morning, 5.13 in the morning, with an ambient temperature in Studio A, somewhere around David Letterman levels of something like 62 degrees or even colder, I don't have those issues. And living in Canada where 10 months of the year, I'm not gonna have to worry about any sort of overheating outside, I represent a small minority. And yes, there's an awful lot of Europeans and Asians that live in cooler climates, but a bulk of the population lives in very hot areas where being able to shoot video and stills without even worrying about any sort of overheating, that's a big deal. And that will gain an awful lot more market share for Canon customers or for Canon and benefit their customers. And I'd be really excited to see that happen, at least in the Canon EOS R1 and maybe even the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. But one thing I believe is certain, this is just one patent application we've uncovered related to solving the, the thermal problems within current cameras, such as the Canon EOS R5, with increasingly, well, aggressive video resolutions and frame rates for continuous shooting. If the Canon EOS R1 gets 8K at 120 frames per second, or even the Canon EOS R5 Mark II gets 8K at 60 frames per second, or bumps that continuous still shooting rate up to around what? Something like 30 frames per second, or even higher in JPEG, maybe 40, 50, or 60 frames per second, well then I do believe we're gonna to have to have a whole new redesign of the thermal architecture. Now the Canon EOS R1, it does have a better, well it has more space inside because it's got a larger body, it's got more cooling opportunities than the Canon EOS R5, so I'm really looking forward to that. And please go ahead and subscribe and follow me on X because as soon as I uncover more patent filings or patent filing applications on ways to reduce or address the overheating issue, well then I'll be sure to let you know. And if you're looking at purchasing any camera gear like the Canon EOS R5, the R5C, which have been on sale for $900 off, let's take a look and see if they're still on sale now. Um, because that is $900 off is an incredible deal. I'm checking B&H first, and if it's on sale there, then I can guarantee it's going to be on sale at Adorama. And yeah, look at that. $29.99, $900 off for the Canon EOS R5 mirrorless camera, a camera that came out in 2020. And then of course, a year later, we got the Canon EOS R5C, also $900 off for $33.99. And that brings me to another point, that price cut, $900 off, that is an inventory clearing price cut. And while we can expect to see it on the Canon EOS R5, I'm really surprised to see it on the Canon EOS R5C. Is Canon planning actually to release the R5C Mark II alongside the Canon EOS R5 Mark II? Well, the smart money says no, there's no validation, there's no rumors, there's nothing about it. But if we actually look at it from a logical point of view, it certainly makes a whole lot of sense. Here's our Canon EOS R5 Mark II for, well, stills and video hybrid shooters. Basically, it's designed for photographers that wanna shoot stills, but also have video access capabilities. And then the R5C, this is for all you video shooters that still want a really solid stills hybrid camera, but we're gonna give you a video-centric camera with a video-centric operating system directly from the cinema line. And that certainly would make a lot, a lot of sense. So when I saw that $900 off that inventory clearing price, because that's what this is designed to do, it's designed to clear out the inventory, I really began to wonder, could we get the R5C Mark II at the same time? Now, according to Canon Rumors and the Camera Insider, I think they both said all along that we're not gonna be getting the Canon EOS R5C Mark II at the same time as the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. However, that just doesn't mean that we couldn't get a little bit, I, I don't know. I'm just, you see what I'm thinking here? $900 off, that, this is technology that we definitely could see in the Canon EOS R5C Mark II as well. And that camera has sold well. I don't believe that Canon has abandoned the R5C in any way whatsoever. And you know what? If Canon had have released the R5C at the same time as the Canon EOS R5, especially without, with all that overheating talk, I can guarantee you, 
I would have purchased the R5C instead of the R5. I mean, it doesn't look that chunk it doesn't look that chunky like other cinema cameras, and I'd still be able to travel the world without somebody going, nope, sorry, you can't come in here with that video camera. It still looks like a stills hybrid camera. Anyhow, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to use my affiliate links down below if you're looking at purchasing either of those two cameras, other camera bodies or lenses. There's still a lot of sales on that started on Black Friday, such as the R5 and the R5C. And uh, if you're looking for the latest news and information, then don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also follow me on Twitter. That's where I put out the latest pricing information and all those other stories that are, well, they're a little bit, they're not big enough to have their own separate video. But that's it for now. Have yourself a great day and um, hopefully you're getting all your Christmas shopping done because that's just a couple of weeks away. And uh, I got to let you in on a little bit of a secret. So I've been going crazy. You notice I haven't put out as many videos over the last few days. Well, that's because my wife had to leave um, on a family emergency and um, she's left me alone for three weeks. She didn't take our son with her because of the nature of the family emergency. Um, my mom's in town. So um, it's a little bit crazy here. So I'm doing lunches, dinners, um, breakfasts. I'm doing all the preparations. I've got my day job. I've got this channel. I've been away on training. So I'm a little bit spent. However, rest assured that I'll continue producing videos on a regular rate as I see things that come up, such as this patent filing. I did a lot of the legwork for this video last night, downloading the patent images, downloading the patent application as well as doing a little bit of research. And what I did this time is I left off a lot of the legalese because I find that it's a little bit hard to understand. But rest assured that if any other patent filing has come out indicating technologies that Canon has been researching on in the last couple of years that could end up in the R5 Mark II or the R1, I'll be sure to publish a video. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for dialing in, tuning in. We'll see you again soon.